Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. You find me in Greater Manchester at the start of the 33 mile long M56 motorway. The first proposals for the M56 came about in 1947, although at this time the plans were simply to construct a motorway across Cheshire. After 11 years of doing stuff, in 1958, the councils and the Ministry of Transport had finally agreed on a route. Ten years later, in 1968, construction would finally begin, with the first section of the M56 opening in 1971, which ran between junctions 11 and 14. The second section opened in 1972, which would run between junctions 1 and 7. Junction 1 is also known as the Kingsway Interchange, and it's a windy mess of slip roads between the M56, the M60 and the A34. I've coloured in the M56 on this map, so hopefully it's a bit easier to see what's going on. An interesting feature of the junction is the 270 degree loop which is found on the slip road linking the A34 to the M56. Junctions 2, 3 and 3A are all crammed in next to one another at a point where the M56 seems to have an additional spur. But wait, if we're travelling westbound we seem to join the main carriageway of the M56 at Junction 3. What's going on? This doesn't make any sense. It turns out that the entire section of the M56 from Junctions 1 to 3 is technically a motorway spur. And indeed, it's called the Charleston Spur, but why do we have it in the first place? Well, we can see at Junction 3 that the carriageway continues north, with the M56 then ending at Junction 3A, where the A5103 takes over. Of course, the original idea was for the motorway to continue north and join up with the A57M, but that part of the motorway was never built. Along the route of the A5103, we can see where space has been left for a motorway to be built, and it also explains why the interchange with the M60 is so over-engineered. At one point, it was going to be a motorway-to-motorway -motorway interchange. Anyway, none of that happened, so the first section of the M56 is technically a spur road and we join the main carriageway at Junction 3. I think the small section of M56 that runs up to Junction 3A is more of a formality. The roundabout and slip roads need to be under motorway regulations to prevent any non-motorway traffic from finding its way onto the main M56, but all of this adds up to a bit of an odd junction layout. Next up is a bit of a problem. Between junctions 3 and 7 is a flight authorization zone as a result of the nearby Manchester airport. In short, it means I can't fly the drone around here without explicit permission from those guys, and I can't be bothered with all of that, so we're going to skip a few things. What I will do, though, is improvise and drop in a few other shots whilst we discuss the massive Junction 5. It's a result of a motorway plan that wasn't quite cancelled, but it also wasn't quite completed. At one point, Manchester had its very own ringways project underway, which involved the construction of several large roads and motorways in and around the city. Much like the London ringways project, some of it was built, some of it wasn't, and today we've bodged it all together and called it a road network. Part of Manchester's Ring Road project would have involved a motorway running from the A6 around the south of Manchester through Junction 5 of the M56 and then on to link up with the M60. But it didn't end up like that and for a while Junction 5 and its spur didn't really go anywhere other than the airport. In 2008 during a recession with the government wanting to create jobs they decided that that was the perfect time to build that missing motorway link between the A6 and the M56. But it was the time of a recession and not wanting to spend too much money decided that a dual carriageway would be sufficient. Junction Seven is another junction with a bit of an odd layout. It's becoming quite apparent that the M56 road plan has enjoyed their crack. The M56 used to terminate at the Bowden roundabout here before it was extended to the west in 1974. The junction layout was much simpler back then and it stayed that way till around 2017 when it was reworked following upgrades to the A556. Junction 8, at first glance, is nowhere to be seen. We actually nearly missed it. You'll find Junction 8 at Junction 7. Huh? It turns out that this small loop slip road that connects the A556 with the M56 is Junction 8. Or at least it was. Following the A556 upgrades and Junction 7 redesign, Junction 8 just sort of quietly disappeared and is now considered part of Junction 7. Junction 9 is where the M56 meets the M6 at the Lime Interchange. And just next door to the interchange is the old Stretton Airfield, a naval air station that was built in 1942. It was originally intended to serve the RAF as a night fighter station to protect Manchester and Liverpool during any bombing raids. However, by the time the airfield was completed, the enemy's tactics had changed, therefore the airfield was no longer required. It was handed over to the Royal Navy, who flew aircraft from the site over to their aircraft carriers in the Irish Sea. And the site was also used by Ferry Aviation for testing and development of their Barracuda, Firefly and Fulmar aircraft. The airfield closed in 1958, and then the M56 diced the site in half when it was constructed in 1975. But that's not the end of the story for this airfield. It's now owned by Duncan Cameron, co-founder of MoneySupermarket.com. Mr Cameron's had planning permission granted to build a large luxury house on the site, along with an underground car park 
park suitable for 120 cars. Now you see what he's gone and done there is bought himself his own personal car playground or racetrack. Except it won't be a racetrack, it'll be a network of access roads. No, honestly, Mr. Planning Officer, I'd never race up and down the massive runway that I've just acquired. I'm a little bit jealous, to be fair. Step one, sell YouTube channel for £150 million. Actually, it was 164 he got first time around, I think. Junction 11 marks the original starting point of the M56. I mentioned earlier that the first section to be built was between junctions 11 and 14, and that opened in 1972. Unlike most of the other junctions on the M56, this is a fairly straightforward roundabout style junction, and just off the roundabout is where we find the Daresbury Business Park. It started out as the Daresbury Park Hotel, but in the early 2000s, the site was expanded and several commercial units were added. Now, at this point, there was going to be a nice little section about an abandoned road that you'll find in the Business Park. Here it is on Google Maps. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist anymore because it's sort of been built on. So we'll have to leave it there for Junction 11 and crack on with the rest. Highways England. In 2017, they announced their intention to build a new junction on the M56 numbered Junction 11A. The new junction would link the A533 to the M56, and given that the A533 has been built to accommodate such additions, it seems like the perfect plan. So they cancelled it, of course. Having spent a load of money on consultations, planning meetings and other nonsense over a period of three years. They say that the new junction wouldn't be needed following upgrade works that were done nearby at Junction 12. The thing is, that's a load of shite. Because the upgrade works at Junction 12 were all done and dusted by 2017, which is when the consultation for the new junction started. The timeline doesn't add up. I mean, why would you go to the trouble and the expense of planning a new junction with the knowledge that it wasn't going to happen? Instead of a new Junction 11A, what they did instead was build a new bridge, because reasons. Just after Junction 12 and the M56 crosses over the River Weaver on the 970 metre long Weaver Viaduct. But before we look at that, I noticed a short distance away the remains of a swing bridge, or at least I think it is. Looking at some old maps confirms that there certainly was a swing bridge crossing the River Weaver at this point, but this structure here doesn't really look right to me. Is this structure the remains of an old swing bridge, or is it just part of the infrastructure to do with a swing bridge? I'm not really sure. To me it looks more like a slidey bridge rather than a swing bridge, so perhaps maybe once upon a time this bridge would slide out. I don't know. Back to the Weaver Viaduct, and it's one of the largest concrete viaducts on the motorway network. The viaduct has got 33 spans in total, with the largest coming in at 68 metres, and it was built over a two-year period between 1968 and 1970. Its position makes things a little tricky because it's prone to strong crosswinds which has resulted in several accidents over the years and it's quite common to see the bridge closed during such weather. As you head across the viaducts and away from Junction 12 you're treated to a lovely view of Stanlow Oil Refinery. The next junction along is Junction 14 and that means we're missing one. What's the deal there? The story goes that there were once plans to build a motorway link connecting the M56 and the M57 motorways. However, that's not entirely accurate. And indeed, with the small matter of the River Mersey sitting between the two motorways, it seems unlikely that this sort of motorway link would be constructed. The more logical explanation and theory for the lack of Junction 13 is that it would have been built to serve the nearby industries, but was cancelled due to the environmental impact it would have had on the area. There's an oil refinery just over there. If there's one bit of land we don't really give a shit about, is the bit next to the oil refinery, surely. And that oil refinery is the Stanlow Oil Refinery. It was opened in 1924 by Shell UK and then later sold to SI UK in 2011. The site can manufacture up to 296,000 barrels of oil per day and apparently supplies 16% of the country's petrol. It covers an area of around 1,900 acres, which is bloody massive, and in 1940 its own dedicated railway station opened. According to super train nerd Jeff Mar Marshall, between the years 2018 and 2019, Stanlow and Thornton Railway Station was the least used station in Cheshire. Hi Jeff, how are you doing? I believe today the station's been closed due to safety concerns surrounding the footbridge, which is the station's only entrance and exit. At Junction 14 itself, we find Road Chef's Chester Services, and it's the only service station on the M56 which is actually a bit of a lie. If we go back to Junction 9 or the Lime Interchange, you're able to access the Lime services from the M56. There aren't any signs on the M56 to tell you about this, and to be fair, officially speaking, Lime Services is on the M6, but it's so close to the M56, it might as well be, and you've got access to it. Anyway, so technically speaking, yes, Chester Services is indeed the only services on the M56, but it's not the only one you're able to access. Okay. Uh, have I left my script in the car? Yes. The section of M56 that runs between junctions 14 and 16 was completed in 1981, which means the M56 had a 10-year build time. Although if we factor in that the idea was first proposed in 1947, that's about 34 years in the making. 
That's nearly a year for every mile of the M56. Anyway, not a lot happens on this section really. The motorway makes its way mostly through open fields. It passes through the Stoke Interchange, which conveniently I've skipped over. We've covered it already in the M53 video. And after that, the M56 comes to an end at Junction 16, where the A494 takes over. The junction used to be a simple roundabout, which caused problems with traffic. So in the mid-2000s, whilst there was also some upgrade work being done to the A494, they took the opportunity to redesign the junction and add free-flowing movements between the M56 and the A494. And there we are then, guys. That's all we've got time for this week. I hope you liked the video. If you did, there is, of course, a button specifically for that. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. That would be wicked sweet awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John. You've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I'll see you guys next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.